part of our scenic view right now. Crowder is Gino Toretta on the Toyota of Hollywood hotline. Gino Toretta. And by the way, we're going to talk some Canes and some Dolphins. If you're looking for Canes or Dolphins merchandise this season, you check out Caneswear in Davie on University Drive or check out Caneswear.com. But Gino Toretta, the Heisman Trophy winner, he joins us every week, talk a little football. Gino is the ambassador for Evening's Delight, South Florida's source for all outdoor kitchen, grilling, and tailgate needs. They have a full line of grills, smokers, charcoal pellets, fuel. Gino loves to grill. Crowder loves to grill. Evening's Delight. They have two locations, Pinecrest and Davie. Evening's Delight is South Florida's source for big green egg grills, accessories, seasoning, sauces, and more. And by the way, Gino's touchdown radio as the Georgia-Kentucky game this Saturday. Uh, Gino will be on the call from Kentucky. How, how would – hello, Gino. How hello. would the Canes hold up? And I know we've only seen two games, but one of them was against Florida. And how would, in your opinion, early on in the season, the Canes hold up against a team like Georgia? Well, I, I'm not sure how anybody <laughs> is going to hold up against Georgia because they've – They've they've really reloaded. They they're a very talented group. But I I, I think that uh, listen, Georgia plays tough. Miami and and uh, and Mario's got UM playing tough. Kind of that Saban, you know, coaching tree. Syracuse, another Saban guy. They're actually playing tough. So I, I know this. It would be a physical physical battle. I think uh, for this this weekend. Uh, if you can give me some talk show topics. Uh, I would love to have them for the game because <laughs> you're going to go, need material other than the I'm game. Gonna, I'm going to go out on a limb here and uh, let's see. They haven't <laughs> beat a number one. Kentucky has not beaten a number one ranked team uh, in a long time, and it's not going to start because they got smoked against South Carolina last weekend, uh, and South Carolina is not near the team that Georgia is. So. <laughs> Gino, you know, talking about that, we're not, now we know and everybody wants to do the widespread offense and the quarterback gurus and all this stuff. Every time we talk about football, it's about whooping somebody's ass in the trenches, and that's the teams that are good. I, it, it hasn't changed that much because I remember the power, you know, the power by, and you remember running, running powers and running post and all that downhill stuff. Those are the teams that still win, or you can win without doing it, but I think the teams that win consistently can do it. Well, point of attack, you know, you know as well as I do. Defensively, every coach is going to be like, stop the run, make them, make them one dimensional, make them throw the ball, stop the run. Uh, on the other side of the ball, I would say this: schematically, what we did at Miami when I was there is very similar to what they're doing now. One back, spread it out, but the addition of the RPO where the quarterback is a run threat because you know from all your game film, you have a one person advantage. When the quarterback takes himself out and throws the ball, well, when the quarterback's actually running it, if you all eleven guys aren't on point, then there's going to be a big hole. And I think that that's where the additional threat against defenses is today. Is you know when I came out, it was you watching Marino and and uh, you know in Montana and those guys sit in the pocket and just just deliver the ball accurately. Now it's okay. Our guy under center has to run, and he's got to be a legitimate threat running the ball where I, you know listen you watch we all watch Lamar Jackson and I just marvel how somebody can be in that physical shape and and to mentally operate in a game like he does because you know as well as I do somebody rips off a 15 20 yard run they're exhausted most of the time running backs hitting their head let me out of the game Lamar's back in the huddle on that so I, I would just like the quarterback threat of the run game is uh, is a total difference maker and makes it that much harder on the defense to stop the other team. What what would what would have your over under on rushing yards have been during games that you were a, quarterback well, for? Like, I'm going to say it, this. I'm going to say this, and and if you want to win a bar bet of of the Miami great quarterbacks, who's the only one that's that uh, had positive yards rushing at the end of his career, and that stop was it. yours truly. Stop it! Really. I swear to God. How many? My, now, listen, my longest, I had a third and 13. I rushed for 14 against Florida State. I think my longest in my career was 16, but I might have ended with like 32 yards positively in rushing. Now, that was back in the old days where sacks went against the quarterback. Sacks oh, don't go against right. the passing game. Sacks went against your running game. So, uh, 
you know, it, it was funny this past weekend doing the Colorado and, and Nebraska. Nebraska had zero yards rushing in the third quarter, and Shadur Sanders was like minus thirty. So it was, you know, it was it was uh, it was interesting. But uh, I did end with positive yards. If you're going to give me an over under on the game, uh, man, if they if they first off the bookie's an idiot for giving me a line on my rushing have total. to be a half Might yard, two, no, right? Two yards, three. I mean, I you know, I don't know because <laughs> I've got two it tonight over four and a half because he he know like week one. His over under was two and a half yards. He doesn't look to run. See, the, here's a reason why seasons. you're a gambling degenerate and why yes. I would never bet that line. Because you could get totally screwed by an official if he runs in the clear and he starts to slide. They kill the quarterback. They take two yards from the quarterback as soon as he stands up and starts to slide. That could be your bet right there. Or a kneel down at the end of the game that counts against rushing yards. Really it doesn't wow. but the kneel down does. Yeah, you can. Uh, and you're still taking that. Oh, I mean, gladly. And 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 at halftime, I'll probably I'm just, walk downstairs. I'm just curious, to the, just like on the, an average on an average game. So this is a game you know the team. Like, how many bets are you placing? Are you like parlaying? So like I, t- I ten I, different I, parlays okay. and so tonight. I I said at the beginning of the show that I have three bets rolling tonight. I, I did put one more bet in during this last commercial break. So I have four bets tonight. Here's what I have. I have Tua over four and a half yards rushing. Okay. I have the game total over 49. I have Tua anytime touchdown at plus 500, meaning he's got to run the ball in, not throw it in. Like he's got to run the ball in. That's a that's a long shot. That's a flyer. And I'll I just took what. another I just took another flyer during the commercial break. Uh, because the the over unders on passing yards for Tua and Josh Allen are like in the two thirties and two sixties, I think. Um, I took I parlayed them both to have over three hundred yards passing. So the odds are very high. It's a long shot flyer, but I could see an aerial uh, attack tonight. I I think I've heard this before, and it's probably been on your show. Just Venmo me the money. And I'll let you know how much you lost. I tell them all the time, Gino. As, uh, as Defo once, uh, as Defo once said to me, he said, "My mom calls me and she'll leave me a voicemail. I haven't heard from you in a while. Call me back. It's called one eight hundred. Admit it." <laughs> you know it's problem. bad when your mom's telling you <laughs> you got problems. But I never gamble more than I can afford to lose. I had a good, uh, had a good weekend on uh, on week one. And then what did I just win the other night? Oh, so I'm uh, curious. Was, is this is this like um, you know because you're supposed to account for it in your tax season? So do you file like put it oh, in your taxes? I don't ever end up positive. So if, if I account for <laughs> well, that's it, it's good. Losses. If you don't end up yeah, positive, yeah. then you should be writing it off. I've, in in uh, 54 years of life, I have never ended up in the positive at the end of a year. You know, you know what they say: those built those casinos weren't built on winners, Hawk. Maybe right. take take that <laughs> advice. That's right. And just every time I don't. walk, every time I drive past Hard Rock, I always go, "Look at what I built." And a lot of people <laughs> think I wouldn't account. Uh, wouldn't, <laughs> Yep. Wouldn't add up to much. You walk in hard, right? They say, "Hey, dummy." I'm sorry, Mister <laughs> Mister Crowder. How you doing? I say, "What did you call me?" <laughs> Gino Toretta, by the way, joins us every Thursday on this program. We talk some football, and he is brought to us by our friends at Evenings Delight, South Florida source for all your outdoor kitchen, grilling, and tailgate needs. And again, Evenings Delight is South Florida source for big green egg grills, accessories, seasoning, sauces, and more. Uh, real quick on the Canes, you have any kind of concerns? I kind of feel like, you know, just based on the past decade or so, Ball State or USF the next week would somehow become this thing. Maybe not a loss, but just like a thing that you're sweating out at the end. Because that's just the way that things have happened over the, uh, the last decade or so. I don't have any trepidation about those two games coming up because I feel differently about this particular Canes team. I would say this. One of the reasons that college football has the allure is because of upsets. Because Northern Illinois beat Notre Dame on the road last week. And you're, you'll you get that sort of thing. But I think that this team with Cam, I think they're mature. I think with the coaching staff, they'll be ready. I, I think that, uh, yeah, but these are two important games. Like, you know, should does the best roster always win a football game? No. And, and I think that 
you know, especially if you're, you know, you're in it. I mean, heck, when these these players they watched in the Notre Dame game last week and they realized that could be them and it could ruin their chances of of a national championship hunt. And uh, so I think that uh, that that other teams when they kind of slip up like that, it wakes you up. But I think the maturity level of this squad is there that they're going to, you know, go out, be ready to play this week. And, and basically it's just kind of the old cliche. It's just one week at a time. But, um, listen, every game's important, especially nowadays in this, in this playoff and, and that. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I, I know this it's, it's, since they're celebrating our 35th anniversary of our, of our 89 championship, yeah. if, uh, if they announce our team at halftime and we're not playing very well, I guarantee you, I don't know how many guys are coming, but there's going to be a hundred guys giving them an earful from, <laughs> from the field. You're not going to be there, obviously, right? Because you'll be in Kentucky. I, I, I am. I'm going to see the guy. I saw Coach Erickson today, uh, Russell Maryland. Saw they're in town, and then tomorrow we have a tomorrow night we have a we have a dinner amongst the team. But I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, be at the game. But I, I there's no question my my teammates that I played with will not. Um, let it go by easily and be quiet if we are uh, not dominating like we should be. And, you know, I got to ask you, when, so speaking about those games, because I, I tell a story about um, I played FAMU. Actually, the, you went and played FAMU last week, and we beat them 73-3. to And after the game, guys were asking me, could I meet them their parents outside of the locker room for an autograph? And we just played against each other. And it was weird to me as a kid. Like, I was like – why the hell do you want my autograph? I just whooped your ass by 70 points. When do you call off the dogs in, in, in a game and we're assuming Ball State's going to be one of those games? Is it a score? Is it my guys are playing a certain way? Is it I don't want to put them in harm's way? Like, when do you call off the dogs in those games that you assume are beatdowns? See, my question is this. How do you get to 70? Like, like and, and listen, I broadcast games every week, and, and – to me, at least when we played, because we were always, quote, unquote, the bad guys if we put any points on the board or, or too many. So we were – we went into a game where, like, let's say FAMU. It was, can we, the starters, be out at halftime? And then the backups going. So, essentially, you don't change your game plan. You don't change how aggressive you're going to be from a coaching staff. It's just instead of the starters being in the game, your backups, and then when they put some points on the board – you know, then, then the third team. But I was always – I don't know. We might have scored 56 in a game. I don't think we ever got to 60. And we got to 56. We scored 35 points in the second quarter. I'm like, how did – like, Ole Miss beat somebody 70 to 6. Is, like, how do you get to 70? Like, like no offense. If the second quarterback and a third team quarterback are going in, you're really getting to 70 points or the starters are in there a little bit too long. That, that's at least my thing. I'm like, get the starters out. Don't yeah. get hurt. Put the backups in, still call the same game plan, and then you get those kids, you know, some experience and and that. I, I just am always amazed somebody can score seventy points or eighty points in a game, and they're like, they're not catching grief because I know this: if we beat somebody by more than four touchdowns, it was Miami, you know, typical. They're running up the score, they were calling and, to shut down the program. Yeah, they, you know, cover right Sports Illustrated. Can you believe yeah. they Miami scored seventy points and, uh, <laughs> against the Little Sisters of the Poor? You know, and so. Anyway. <laughs> Um, let me let me ask you one question before we run out of time here. We, and it's just a topic of conversation the last couple of days, but I'm I'm guessing you watched Bryce Young plenty in college. I'm fascinated with the Carolina Panthers and how bad they are, and I think Bryce Young is just too small to be a successful NFL quarterback. And Crowder even says like he's taking hits from guys like on a on a regular basis that. I don't know if a guy his size can withstand it. Solana's a supporter of Bryce Young. He believes that you can't judge what you've seen last season and one week of this season. Where do you stand on him being a successful NFL quarterback? I, I say this. Quarterback relies on 10 other guys doing their job to, to look good. And I'm not sure they have 10 other good players on the Carolina Panthers. They have, they have an owner which – you know, listen, we've we've seen the stuff on social media. I don't think there's a lot of fans in Carolina. Uh, they went through a couple coaches. Matt Rule, what did he last? A season and a half. Uh, Frank Reich, I think he lasted, what, half a season? He's not he, – I don't even think he's the coach anymore. I couldn't not. even tell you – yeah, I couldn't even tell you who the coach Canales, is. Canales, so, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, the grass is always yeah. greener with the coaching staffs. You got personnel turnover. 
Um, you know, change has been through coaching changes. I, I just – I think there's so much more – than than just Bryce Young. I think he's an unbelievably talented player. Um, but listen, look at Brock Purdy in San Francisco. He's I mean they're the same size. I mean it's, you get in the right system, the right scheme. Are they the same size? And you got the right talent, the same talent. Yeah, they're they're. I mean Bryce Bryce is not you know. I, I always thought like Kyle, Kyler Murray's. I don't know if he's as he looks big as stockier Bryce. to me though. Like like all, like he can withstand. All. All of them itsy bitsy spiders. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got you got to think of who you're talking to. Like you walk on. I remember walking onto a field. I think this was years after I got done playing, and in the tunnel, and it was the Tennessee Titans and somebody. And I'm walking out onto the field, like amongst the offensive linemen for the Titans, and every dude is like three, four inches taller than I was. And I'm like, and I'm not, you know, I'm like six three. I'm like. Damn, these dudes are big. <laughs> and, I'm, and I thought the same thing, Hawk. I'm like going, man, you got to find a throwing lane even at 6'3". And these guys are, you know, six foot. You know, do they have to fi- uh, find a lane? But, man, they, they traded away, you know, their best receiver. I, I mean, they're, they are not good. I mean, like if this was a soccer deal, it would be relegation. No, no, oh, but it's not on Bryce Young, in your opinion. No, he's just he he can only. I mean, like he can throw. Like if we went out and played seven on seven, you'd be like, "Damn, this kid's accurate as hell." I mean, there was questions about Tua until he did it. You know, there are going to be questions about Bryce. The bad thing is, is he, he ain't got no hundred million dollar receiver out there that's going to. There's no light anybody. at the end of the tunnel. No, for I don't. I mean, you don't team, see it yeah. now. It's going to take him time. Yeah. So I, I just. Yeah. But it, you know those taking those shots at man, it doesn't matter if you're little or big. Taking them shots it takes a lot of years off your life. <laughs> at the end of it, Crowder, Crowder's got bunion pads in his in his, uh, in his office now. He went like he has. This is how you know you're washed. <laughs> this is how. This is how you, know, you know, know you're got washed. Dr. Show's hey. bunion cushion. Dude's you, got you, bunion you, cushion. You know what? You need to just. You need to go. Crowder, have you have you got the uh, UFOs yet? Oh, what's o- that? O O F O S. They're like flip flops, but they're like thick foam. Like they're supposed to be for runners rejuvenating like your legs, mm-hmm. bro. I'm telling you, walk around on these hard floors in South Florida. They you you will thank me. I, I found them in a running store in Chicago years ago. I'm like, damn, these things are comfortable. Can I wear and these? I, the, so I wear them around man, the house. The old Ufo. man, old Ufo. maniest. Exactly. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna give a barbecue tips and uh, and, and, and old, old man, man old man arth- arthritis <laughs> tips. <laughs> We're going to reverse sear our steaks and our ufos. <laughs> we got exactly. action. Hey, you got to, hey, crowd it. Don't, don't be laughing. I got an outdoor pair and an indoor pair because I don't, I don't want to bring the dirt outside to inside. <laughs> this, is, this is a we wash show. Ufos to eat <laughs> <these delights. laughs> this is a wash show. <laughs> Um, Dino Toretta, he's out with us every Thursday, courtesy of Evening's Delight. And I and I say uh, these big green eggs, and we're really out of time. But why does everyone love those? You know, I'm not a grill master. Why does everyone love those big green eggs? Because you can get, you can go low and slow. You can go hot. I mean, them, them girls get 700 degrees like quick. Um, and then you can you get the smoke, real fla- the charcoal flavor. But you can do pizzas on them. You know, I know you're a big pizza guy. You can mm. put the the uh, pizza ceramic on it you can heat up grill grill your wings i mean it's basically you can use fire or you can just use low and smoke low and slow smoke and uh and that but they are they are phenomenal and they're multi uh faceted from the standpoint of you know since you're an expert in the reverse searing method that, that we taught you last <laughs> week that you can go low and then you can then you can open up the vents and sear the heck out of your meat at the end get a little christmas from the inside out that is can I can I reverse sear on my George Foreman grill? You need to reverse sear them bets and tell them you 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 uh you you mail them in. Just say no, I don't want to. I, I want to pull these back. Right, I'm pulling I wish you off they my had Christmas a, list. A reverse sear button on these damn bets. Me and Hawk get into. What are you talking about those uh, bunion cushions? Didn't pay for themselves, man. That's gambling winnings right there. <laughs> that's that's because we're doing well this season. Man can take care of his feet. <laughs> so when does it go bad? Since you, since you you're unvictorious in 54 years, when does it go bad? Oh, pretty soon. Pretty soon. <laughs> Gino, 
Hey, I, I think I do. Re- I think I do remember what the Marlins start out zero and eight, and you're like, they can't start out zero and five. They can't start zero and six. They can't start zero well, and But seven. even when I said we had a good week one, I mean, I was only down six or seven hundred. I mean, that like I was, I was really happy with that's the, just uh, that's just good money chasing bad. That's just good money chasing bad. I told you, just here, I'll give you my Venmo and just send it to me. We'll, we're going to start an NIL deal for Hawks betting, and we won't put in the bets. Listen, we should get an NIL deal for Crowder and uh, Dr. Scholes. Because... Hey, man, that left ring toe is bad off, man. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Crowdy, you bu- do you buy that thing yourself? Or do you make somebody go in the grocery Gito, store and buy it for you? Gito, I swear, when I bought, we talked about it on the show. I felt like I was doing something wrong, like I was ashamed. Because <laughs> you walk up you to the cash been. register, it's a you know, it's a little eighteen year old girl. I'm buying bunion cushions. Hey, <laughs> I don't. Hey, feel, you walk, you walked strong. up in some flip flops. She looked down and she goes, "Ooh." <laughs> She handed him the bunion cushion. He didn't even ask for him. Yeah, she said, you know what, sir? Go ahead. This one's on me. You can take these. <laughs> I wish you all the luck in the world, sir. <laughs> I hope things turn around for you hey, when you're nasty. Hey, do you, do you have one of those fi- those filers where you got to file your toe and all, all the skin I, all over? I got a raptor claw. That left ring toe. <laughs> Is a, is a All right, we got to go. We're, we're going to run out of time. Gino Toretta is out with us every Thursday, and he is the ambassador for Evenings Delight, South Florida Source, for all your outdoor kitchen, grilling, and tailgate needs. They've got two locations, Pinecrest and Davy. And if you follow Evenings Delight on Instagram, you can see a lot of video with Gino telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing on the grill. Thank you, Gino. Have a good call at the uh, game in Kentucky. All right, guys.